If I embraced bitterness, I would remind you that you are nothing but a despicable, child-murdering, cowardly, impotent eunuch and pervert masquerading as a human being. If I were the animal that you are, I would say that I relish the thought of you be being treated to the same despicable brutality, terror, and agony at the hands of your soon-to-be fellow inmates that you relished inflicting on your defenseless victims. If I were spiteful, I would remind you that it is only fitting that a twisted narcissistic psychopath obsessed with public attention will soon have his world reduced to an isolated, solitary existence in an 80-square-foot cell, doomed to languish away the rest of your miserable life alone. If I had your devil nature, I would delight in the fact that your congregation has turned its back on you, that your friends have deserted you, that your wife has divorced you, that your own children have disowned you, and then I would remind you that you will never have any warm, loving human contact again for the remainder of your twisted existence. If I were cynical, I would remind this court that you would return to your murderous ways in a heartbeat if given the opportunity. So for the safety of society, you must remain caged forever like any other vicious predatory animal. If I were to sink to your level, I would say that this world would have been much better off had your mother aborted your demon soul before you were unleashed on this world, sparing ten innocent lives and avoiding untold heartache for this community. If I were vindictive, I would wish you many long, emotionally tortured years in your cage, haunted every night by your victims' hopeless pleas for mercy as you played God and pronounced their death sentences upon them. If I had your sadistic nature, I would delight in the pain you feel now in realizing that your own arrogance and ego got you caught, that if you just kept your big mouth shut, you'd still be a free man today, able to eat pizza and walk your dog Dudley. If I wanted revenge, I would pray that you develop a lingering illness from which you suffer for many, many years before you ultimately choke to death one lonely night on your own vomit. If I were judgmental, I would call you the most despicable form of hypocrite for profaning Christianity by daring to associate yourself with my faith and for blaspheming God's house with your demonic actions. If I were unforgiving, I would tell you that I will accept any shameful, meaningless attempts on your part to feign remorse by responding that I will grant you forgiveness the same day that hell freezes over, although I know that my mother in her Christian grace has already long since forgiven you. But I won't hurl these invectives at you, or I won't rain these curses down upon you, because you're not smart enough to understand most of the words I would use anyway. And if you, even if you could begin to fathom the depth of my hatred for you, I would still refuse to waste any breath on you, because that would once again allow you the satisfaction of being in the limelight, and that attention I refuse to allow you. As of today, you no longer exist. Today, the focus finally moves out from under the shadow, your depraved shadow of hell's darkness into the light of your victims and their families. Speaking for my mother with us in spirit, for my own family, and I hope for the entire family of survivors here today, we dedicate this day to the memories of those who cannot be with us. Today we also celebrate with this community the relief in knowing that we will never again be terrorized by a monster's demented fantasies. Today we will each silently remember a father, a brother, a wife, a mother, a sister, a daughter, a grandmother, all those we love so deeply and miss so dearly still. Today we will quietly reminisce on all that they meant to us. We will smile at all the silly things they did that made us laugh, and we will renew our pride in who they were. Today we will thank them for shaping our lives, for being there when we needed them, for setting the example of what we should be, for making us who we are, and for allowing us to be their living legacies. From this point on, we declare our independence from the tyranny of your actions. While you begin your slow and painful descent into hell, we will choose to rise above our pain. While you sink into an emotional abyss of hopelessness and despair, we will channel our grief into positive endeavors, those life activities which would please the ones we have lost. While you agonize over the reality that your last victims were ironically your own family, we will embrace the new family we now have, with whom we will always share a common bond forged from the pain of adversity and loss. While your body wastes away in prison, we will renew ourselves by incorporating into our lives those characteristics modeled by our loved ones, humility, compassion, honor, integrity, kindness, selflessness, and love, traits which your twisted, cancerous mind cannot comprehend, I realize. While your wretched soul awaits pronouncement of the one true justice, your damnation to hell for eternity, we will thank God for every day he gives us, realizing as only we can just how precious life really is. 
Finally, we want you to know that we who could so easily have succumbed to your quagmire of madness will not give you that satisfaction. Your despicable actions will not defeat us. Our very lives will be testimony that good can triumph over even the most hideous form of evil and perversion. Just as your days are now over, ours are just beginning. In the final analysis, you have to live with the cold reality that while all of us here will overcome your depravity, you have now lost everything and you will forever remain nothing. May that torment you for the rest of your tortured existence. Thank you, Your Honor. I'm Laurel Keating, the daughter of Dolores Davis. This is an impact statement written by Nan Davis, the daughter-in-law of Dolores Davis. It hadn't been that long since my retirement in the fall. What an exciting day that was for me. After many years as a corporate secretary, I was so looking forward to the relaxing days awaiting me. I was ready for travel, spending time with my family, and was anticipating the birth of my third grandchild. My son, daughter-in-law, and kids from Florida were here at Christmas of 1990, as well as my daughter and her husband. It was wonderful having them visit. We had snow, and the children loved playing in it with their dog, which also made the trip. What fun for each of us. Times we spent together were always short. Of course, when families get together, there is lots of food, laughter, and unfortunately, even disagreements. But that is just life. I love to cook and wanted to be sure everything was just right for them. I know my daughters treasured my passing along recipes and tips to them, and so did I. We truly had a great visit. I was sad to see them leave, but knew that I would be able to see them soon, especially to help, m to help my daughter with her first baby, due to be born in just three months. Then life changed for all of us. Mine was ended in a way that no one should ever have to endure. But my heart broke knowing and seeing that would lie ahead for those left behind. It is always those left behind who suffer the most. But as I always taught my children, it is important to look for the positive and the best that you possibly can in any situation. Trials produce endurance and patience, and Lord knows we all need more of those attributes. Evil exists in the world in all forms, even in human form. To rise above the carnage and hell produced by one individual is what I wished for my family. No longer would I hurt or cry, and I really was a part of all the events that happened in the last 14 years and will continue to be. Physically, I was not present for new births, birthdays, graduations, family events, celebrations, and even disappointments, but there was, but there because my family carries me in their hearts and their love and faith have sustained each other. I hope my legacy and love will live on in my dear ones, and I know that they have risen above the pain and suffering that could have so easily brought much despair and destruction to their lives. I am very proud of them and for their tenacity in seeking to have this horrible matter come to some closure. It is also good that the question will finally be answered for the other families as well. Remember that no one so evil should ever be allowed to hold control over others and that is a choice each person must make as to how they live, will live their life. It is good that the terror has been revealed for what it is and for all to begin their lives anew without the ever-present shadow over them. My family has chosen well, and I do love them as I know they love me. 